They're cooties. <laughs> no, children, children, children. We are all adults here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but we know there's no such thing as cooties. But there is such a thing as germs. Now today, if you get cut or shot, you go to the hospital and the doctor gives you antibiotics. Antibiotics make it so that germs don't get into the wound and make you really sick. During the American Revolution, they didn't have antibiotics. So if you even got just a little scratch, if you didn't take care of it, keep it nice and clean, you could get sick and die weeks and even months later. Now I'm assuming that the grape shot is gonna leave more than just a little scratch, and that this next artifact is gonna leave a lot more than a little scratch. Oh. This is a cannonball from a, a type of cannon called a field piece. Now a field piece would have great big wheels on it, and it would be rolled out to the battlefield. Battlefield, field, piece. Not very creative, but pretty descriptive. This is what is called solid shot. It's a solid iron cannonball. It is very heavy. When you hand it to the person next to you, make sure that they put both of their hands out like this, but also make sure that they're resting their hands on their leg like this so that they don't accidentally drop it. It is deceptively heavy. Good job, that's perfect. It's heavy, huh? Yeah, it's an iron cannonball. What did you expect? <laughs> All right, now. All right, we are now down to the last artifact. This is where you guys find out how good a job you've done using the museum protocol. Do you get to see the really cool, super scary one? Or the lame, boring, not so scary one? Here's where you find out. This last artifact is called a pot hook. It's for cooking. Terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> She's all, yeah. But she wasn't looking at the pot hook. She's looking at the big scary man behind it. Yeah, Mr. Hux is kind of creepy. Go away. <laughs> all right, so guys, this is not the really cool, super scary one. This is the lame, boring, not so scary one. I am not going to hand out this one. I'll hand out the cool one in just a minute. But before I do, I want to explain to you what this is and how it would be used. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So pay very careful attention. I'm sure you'll understand. This is a pot hook. What they would have done to build the camper on the ground, they take three wooden poles and build a tripod over the top of a wrapped chain around that handy chain, almost into the fire that puts one of the rings of the chain, then they take a cooking pot, kind of looks like Harry Potter's cauldron. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They, they take the handle and they put it on just like that. You could adjust the close it was a flame in there, but she was going to fight which ring of the chain it would suit. So if you put it through one of the rings of the chain way down there, it's like down on high heat. You put it through one of the chains, one of the rings of the chain way up here, it's like a light symbol. The pot hook. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> is, is it scary? Yeah. <laughs> is, is it scary? Yeah. I didn't think so. <laughs> it is scary, I told you. Or was it the big scary man behind it? Yeah, it was. All right, so I'm not going to hand this out, but I think that you are going to recognize this last artifact. Shiny, flashy, pokey, stabby. Well, this one isn't so shiny, flashy anymore, but it is still pokey, stabby. So I need you to be really careful with it. We are gonna modify the museum protocol again. I need everybody's eyes up here. While you are holding the bayonet, I need you to hold on to it with both hands. One hand on each end, like this. Not like this, not like this, and this is totally not it, right? <laughs> this is not what I'm asking for. This is wrong. On the end, like this. If you pinch that point, you can feel how sharp it is. You can look at the whole thing and the point doesn't get out of control. Unless you accidentally hit yourself in the face with your hands, which is unlikely, not impossible. Okay, everything will be okay. You'll get a chance to look at it. You hand it to the person next to you. They'll receive it with both hands, slide their hands to the ends, look at it, and then hand it on to the person next to them. Perfect example of how to hand the bayonet to the person next to you coming up right now. Very good. All right, now remember how I said 
The Americans captured Fort Ticonderoga from the British, and the British didn't even fire a single shot. Well, that's true, but it's not what actually happened. Okay, it's what happened, but it's not actually true. Oh, okay, so they fired, but they didn't actually shoot. They shot, but they didn't fire. D Does that make any sense to you guys? No. no. Good. I think you understand history a lot better now. You don't feel like it? Listen to this. History is written by people. And people have opinions. And they allow those opinions to color the facts. If you were reading a book that was written by a patriot, somebody fighting for American independence, they would say the American Revolution is the greatest thing that ever happened to the colonies and the world. But if you were reading a book that was written by a Tory, somebody loyal to the king, they would say the American Revolution is the worst thing that ever happened to the colonies and the world. Now it's the same events, but it's a different perspective on those events. Now I've read dozens of books about the American Revolution, and about half a dozen of them have something in it about how the Americans captured Fort Ticonderoga from the British. They all say something slightly different. But if I put all of that information together, I can paint a clear picture of what might have actually happened. And here's what I think happened. When the Americans attacked Fort Ticonderoga, they attacked really early in the morning in the middle of a terrible storm. So, I mean, it was pouring rain, and it was still dark outside, and there was rain, and there was wind that was blowing the rain, and the sleet, and the snow, and the hail, and did, did I mention the rain? Yeah. Well, there was one British soldier that was standing out on guard duty all night in the rain. He saw the Americans coming right, he loads his musket, puts the powder in the bullet inside there, and he puts the powder in there, and he aims, he pulls the trigger, and nothing happens. It's what's called a flash in the pan. It means that the powder in the pan explodes, makes a bunch of smoke and light and noise, but it doesn't connect to the powder in the barrel. The musket doesn't go off. A flash in the pan. That's where we get that expression. The Americans rush in, they knock that British soldier out, and they capture the fort without firing a single shot. Now, if that British soldier had been standing out on guard duty all night, like this, I understand what happened. But if he had been standing like this, that much difference from an ordinary person could have changed world history. Now I know that sounds melodramatic. But think about this. If he had been standing like this, rain wouldn't have gotten down into the barrel of his musket and fouled the powder, made it so that the powder wouldn't burn. If he had been standing like this, his musket could have gone off. He could have killed the person he was aiming at. Now, is he going to be aiming at the enemy that is farthest away from him, or the one that's closest to him? Which one? Closest. It's the easiest shot. These muskets are only accurate up to about 60 yards, a little over half a football field. That's not very far at all. He's going to be aiming at the American leading the charge into Fort Ticonderoga. That American's name was Benedict Arnold. Now at this time, Benedict Arnold was a hero to the American cause. He would be wounded twice fighting for American independence. You can say a lot of bad things about Benedict Arnold, but calling him a coward, I think is unfair. Pick some of the bad things to say about him that are true. Now, if Benedict Arnold had been sh killed right there, maybe the other American soldiers would have said, hey, did you see that old Benny? He got shot. Ooh, boy, and it looked like it hurt too. <laughs> For a second, anyway, and he was dead, <laughs> and it didn't hurt no more. <laughs> you know what? We don't need to capture Fort Ticonderoga. I mean, we don't need those cannons. Besides, I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm wet, I'm hungry, and I want to go home. Maybe they wouldn't have captured the fort. Those cannons wouldn't have been used to force the British out of Boston. The British could have kept Boston as a strong point and suppressed the rebellion in the other colonies. That would have changed the course of the war, which would have changed American history. And American history has definitely changed world history. One ordinary person, that much different. But that's not what happened. The Americans capture the fort, force the British out of Boston, and then a couple of years later, the British are coming down out of Canada, and they really want to retake Fort Ticonderoga. And here's why. Fort Ticonderoga is located on a point of land that sticks way out into the middle of this long, skinny lake. If you want to transport war materials and troops up and down that long, skinny lake by boat, you've got to go into the guns at Fort Ticonderoga. 
Well, the British recaptured the fort without firing a single shot. Now, why would the Americans give up so easily? I mean, was it really early in the morning? Right? Maybe the Americans were like, Oh, look, the British are coming. Quick, get me a latte. <laughs> okay. Here's what happened. The British set their cannons up on top of the hill that looked down into Fort Ticonderoga. Now think about this. If you want to throw a baseball or an iron cannonball as far as you possibly can, are you going to stand on top of a hill or at the bottom of a ditch? Which one? Top of the hill. On top of the hill because gravity is going to help you out. You'll be able to throw it much farther. Now imagine being an American soldier inside Fort Ticonderoga. Okay, let me see if I got this here straight. Them British fellas, you're going to be able to shoot them cannons down in here and they're going to be able to kill us. <laughs> That's not funny. Why am I laughing? I might get hurt. You might get hurt too. <laughs> I mean, we can fire the cannons back, but they're not going to get all the way up that hill. So they're going to be able to shoot down in here and kill us. And we can't do anything about it. Is that okay with you? Because that's not okay with me. I mean, we need to figure out what we're going to do. we got to come up with a plan. We need to give this some very serious consu- Let's get out of here! Let's go! And that's exactly what they did. They abandoned Fort Ticonderoga without firing a single shot. When they left, they took the cannons that were still in the fort with them. They hitched them to horses and oxen, and away they went through about 70 miles of wilderness. Now, that wilderness is very densely forested, and there are not a lot of roads. If you want to get through that dense forest and the British are chasing after you and you've got those gun carriages, are you going to want to carry around a 15-pound cooking pot? No. You're going to get rid of that. What about the pot hook? Do you need it? No. You'll get rid of that. What about your musket? Are you going to want to keep it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if the British catch up to you, you're going to want to have something to talk about. Excellent conversation piece. What about the bayonet? Are you going to want to keep it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it is awfully shiny, flashy, and pokey stabby. <laughs> right? It's got all those features. But think about this. If you're going through that dense forest, I mean, this could get caught on bushes and tree branches and on other things. <laughs> Even if you take it off and you put it in its little holder on your belt, it still weighs a little bit. It's going to slow you down. If you're trying to hide from the British in that forest, shiny flashy, not going to be your friend. An American soldier abandoned that bayonet at Fort Ticonderoga. Now, when he did it, he didn't want the British to be able to pick it up and use it against him. So here's what he did. He waited for a gun carriage to come by. And that's just the wagon that carries the cannons. He threw the bayonet underneath the wheel, it rolled over it, and bent it right here. Did you guys see that it was bent? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit later, something else came by and smashed the collar. Maybe a wagon wheel rolled over it, or maybe an ox stepped on it, but it bent that fitting. So if a British soldier were to find it, he'd go, oh, I say, shiny, flashy, pokey, stabby. It's all benty, wenty, brokey, wokey. <laughs> if he did manage to get it straightened out enough to where it fit onto the musket, it's still bent right here. So if he fires it, the bullet strikes the bayonet right about here and it ricochets off into some other direction. It's not gonna go where he aimed it. Let's think about that American soldier for a minute. Do you think when he threw that bayonet underneath the wagon wheel that he thought it was gonna be being passed around in a classroom in California today? Yeah. You know, more than likely, that American soldier had never even heard of California. It wasn't a colony and there weren't any states. Here's what he was thinking about. Getting those cannons back to the American army where they would be safe, where he would be safe. Forcing the British out of the colonies, getting the right to vote, sure, all things on his mind. But more immediately, I think he was trying to figure out how to get through that forest fast and light so he wouldn't get shot by a brown vest or stabbed by a bayonet. What about that Spanish coin? When it was brand new down in Lima, Peru, you think the Spaniard that had that in his pocket thought it was going to be being passed around in a classroom in California today? He had heard of California because he was Spanish and in the New World. You guys remember history from fourth grade, the missions? Yeah. He had heard of California, but that's not what he was thinking about. He was thinking about what he was going to spend that money on. Was he going to buy food with it, transportation back to Spain, or maybe pay taxes to King Carlos? Probably pay taxes. What about this? My 
John Adams dollar coin minted in the year 2007 AD. This coin and ones like it are worth roughly 100 cents. It's a dollar coin. <laughs> and you guys are older than it, but think about it. If this coin is still around in 235 years, roughly the same amount of time in the future that separates us from the revolution in the past, I mean, if it's not melted down and made into something else, if it's not thrown in the ground somewhere and just rusts into nothing, if this coin is still around, it's going to be an artifact. People will look at it and they'll wonder, what was it like to be us? What was it like to be alive during the Second Iraq War? What was it like to be alive during the Arab Spring? What was it like to be alive when the first person set foot on Mars? Now that hasn't happened yet. But if it does happen, if, it's going to be in your lifetimes. It could even be one of you. If you want it to be you, study math and science. That's the way to get to Mars. And a whole lot of these wouldn't hurt. What I'm trying to get you guys to understand today is a little bit about the American Revolution, but more importantly, I want you to understand that you are in history. Not just in a history class, you are a part of history. And the things that you do, sometimes even little things, can make a big difference. All right, I will answer any questions that you guys have for the next uh, four minutes. Any questions? Yes? Um, did they have rifles? They did. That's just another type of musket. It takes a little bit longer to load, so most soldiers aren't going to be using rifles. They're going to be using uh, smoothbore muskets like the, uh, like the brown vest. Or at least they're going to want to. First row, go ahead. Or the other things that George Washington you know what, guys? It's just before lunch, and I don't think you really want to know. Do, do you really want to know? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. How could you be if you don't know? Because we are. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll tell you anyway. Here's the thing. 